on you. That shit was ostrich. You give a f What was that for? I'm sick of these Lawrence Fishburne comparisons. It's just getting old. L. Jackson is an American actor and producer known for his prolific social activism. He grew up in a time of segregation but was able to become one of the most successful Hollywood figures. In this video, we will tell you about his difficult path to success. Samuel L. Jackson – How Hollywood's Most Profitable Actor Lives and What He Spends His Millions On Samuel Leroy Jackson was born on December 21, 1948 in the U.S. capital, Washington, D.C., but spent his childhood in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Samuel saw his father only twice in his life. He left the family and later died of alcoholism. The boy was raised by his mom, Elizabeth, and her parents. He was also greatly influenced by his aunt, a theater teacher who introduced the boy to acting. The family lived in a disadvantaged area in a house without running water at the time when racial segregation plagued most every aspect of life in the country. Samuel attended several segregated schools and had experienced racism everywhere since he was a child. His grandfather had taught him not to raise his eyes in front of white people and speaking directly to them was considered uppity. This influenced the views of the future actor who became a social activist fighting against discrimination and named his film company Uppity Films in memory of his grandfather's words. Jackson grew up a shy child due to a stutter and spent all his time studying or playing the trumpet and French horn in the school band. He diligently participated in all the performances of the band, and after graduation, he entered Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia. At first, the young man intended to get a degree in marine biology, then switched to architecture, and to earn extra points, he joined an acting group. By the way, Jackson overcame his stuttering largely through acting. He pretended to be people who didn't have this problem. He also used swear words to overcome his speech impediment, and he still does it because stuttering sometimes comes back. In 1968, America was shocked by the assassination of Martin Luther King. Samuel attended the funeral of the great leader of the civil rights movement in Atlanta and after them joined the protest march in Memphis. Jackson continued his activism in college. Its administration refused to accept African Americans in executive positions, so Samuel and other students took several members of the board of directors hostage. After that, the future actor was punished with a two-year suspension, but the college policy was eventually changed. During the suspension, Jackson moved to Los Angeles to live with his aunt, where he worked as a social worker. For a while, he returned to Atlanta and joined the Black Power movement. But when it became armed, Samuel's mother sent him back to the City of Angels. When the suspension ended, he returned to college and co-founded the Just Us Amateur Theater, where most of the actors were African-American students. Samuel was forced to continue his studies due to the threat of being drafted into the Vietnam War. At that time, conscription was based on the results of the lottery, and the future actor had a high chance of going to the front. In 1972, Jackson received a Bachelor of Arts degree in drama and soon made his film debut, starring in the independent film Together for Days. Two years later, he moved to New York, where he began acting in the theater. Moreover, the young actor moved to a new city together with a girl, also an actress, LaTanya Richardson. They studied at neighboring colleges and both studied acting, but had different interests. LaTanya, in her own words, was a theater snob, and Samuel adored movies. In spite of this, they got along and have been together ever since. LaTanya became a guiding light for Jackson and supported him in all his creative endeavors. And in 1980, the young couple got married. Like many other aspiring actors, Samuel had to work part-time outside of his field. For some time, he was a doorman in the prestigious Manhattan Plaza residential complex known for housing artists and entertainers. In the 80s, the film projects of Samuel L. Jackson include Ragtime, Uncle Tom's Cabin, School Days, 
Coming to America, Do the Right Thing, Sea of Love, as well as the TV series Spencer for Hire. A little later, he appeared in the films Death by Temptation, A Shock to the System, Betsy's Wedding, Mo Better Blues, The Exorcist 3, Goodfellas, The Return of Superfly, and in an episode of the TV series Law and Order. His theater career was also on the upswing. Samuel acted in several successful plays, two of which managed to get to Broadway, but he never made it to the most prestigious stages of New York. He was fired because of his drug and alcohol addiction. His daughter, Zoe, was already growing up, and at some point, Samuel realized that she shouldn't see her father drunk. With the support of Latanya, he underwent treatment in a rehabilitation clinic and got rid of addiction. After that, Jackson repeatedly stressed that his beloved woman saved him and he is ready to throw all the awards won in the cinema at her feet. By the way, Latanya herself has also built a successful acting career, and in 2014, she was nominated for a Tony Theater Award. Immediately after rehabilitation, in 1991, Samuel began work on the film Jungle Fever. Bruh, uh, I'm a little light right now. Could you, like, let me hold some change? Hmm? No? No, Gator, no, 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 no. The dancing shit ain't gonna work. What? Come on, you could do me this one solid. His movie character also suffered from addiction, and this worried Jackson's doctors very much. They were afraid that he would relapse, but this did not happen, and the piercing performance of the actor forced the organizers of the Cannes Film Festival to return the long-forgotten award Best Supporting Actor specifically for Samuel. In the same year, the movies Johnny Suede, Strictly Business, Jumpin' at the Boneyard were released, and a year later, the filmography of the rising star was supplemented by thrillers Juice, Fathers and Sons, Patriot Games, several TV series, and the action movie White Sands. In it, Jackson's fee was $75,000. Next came Loaded Weapon 1, Amos and Andrew, Menace 2 Society, True Romance, Losing Isaiah, and Jurassic Park. Look at this next entry. It's the kicker. White rabbit object. Whatever it did, it did it all. But with the key checks off, the computer didn't file the keystroke, so the only way to find them now is to go through the computer's lines of code one by one. How many lines of code are there? About two main. Samuel Call's participation in Steven Spielberg's film, an important milestone in his career and a serious cinematic experience. At the same time, the actor kept speaking out on the topic of racism that concerned him greatly. He criticized Hollywood for the specific way of casting black actors when roles were offered simply by following a small list of famous performers. Denzel Washington was first and Jackson himself was fifth in line. In 1994, Samuel appeared in the films Fresh, Against the Wall, Hail Caesar, The Search for One-Eyed Jimmy, but his greatest success was the role in Tarantino's Pulp Fiction. Yolanda, it's cool, baby. It's cool. We still just talking. Come on, point the gun at me. Point the gun at me. There you go. The actor was very surprised and flattered when he found out that Quentin had written the role of Gangster Jules specifically for him. After the premiere, Samuel was nominated for a number of awards, including an Oscar, and received an award from the British Academy. But Jackson, in his opinion, became a worldwide celebrity not after Pulp Fiction, but after Die Hard with a Vengeance. Its premiere took place in 1995. The appearance of the Samuels character was created personally by the actor and inspired by the black rights activist Malcolm X. At the same time, the thriller Kiss of Death and the family film Fluke were released, in which Samuel L. Jackson voiced one of the characters. Later, he appeared in the films Hard Eight, The Great White Hype, Trees Lounge, A Time to Kill, and The Long Kiss Goodnight the fee in which amounted to $4.5 million. Next, the thriller 187, the drama Eve's Bayou, and Tarantino's crime film Jackie Brown were released. Who's that? That's Beaumont. Who's Beaumont? An employee I had to let go. For his work, 
He received a Silver Bear at the Berlin Film Festival and a Golden Globe nomination. On weekends, Samuel was starring in Jackie Brown, and on weekdays he worked on the sci-fi action movie Sphere and improvised a lot. Then, in the late 90s, his filmography was replenished with the movies The Negotiator, The Red Violin, Deep Blue Sea, as well as Star Wars Episode I, The Phantom Menace. Jackson was a big fan of the space saga, and he didn't care what character to play. He got the role of Mace Windu. In another film, the crime thriller Out of Sight, Samuel appeared in a cameo role and was not even listed in the credits, but it's worth noting that the actor starred in it for free. In 2000, the audience saw Samuel in the movie's Rules of Engagement, Unbreakable, for which Jackson received $7 million, and Shaft. While working on the latter, Samuel constantly fought with the scriptwriter over derogatory lines. They were eventually cut out, and the actor's fee amounted to $10 million. Then, the mystery drama The Caveman's Valentine, the action movie The 51st State, and the drama Changing Lanes were released. Interestingly enough, in all three films, Samuel had different hairstyles. He started losing his hair quite early and decided not to worry about it, but to use his bald head as a springboard for experiments. Robert Louis Stevenson, a personal wig consultant and stylist who has worked with Jackson for many years, helped him pick out the looks for each film. While Samuel's character's hairstyles changed frequently, what remains consistent is his love of the color purple. Jackson's characters in films often wear clothes of this shade or handle purple objects. Unexpectedly, perhaps, even for himself, the actor managed to get a special purple lightsaber in Star Wars Episode II, Attack of the Clones. He just asked George Lucas about it, and he agreed. Remember, Obi-Wan, if the prophecy is true, your apprentice is the only one who can bring the Force back into balance. Also in the early 2000s, Jackson played in the thriller No Good Deed, receiving $6 million for his work, the action films XXX, Basic, SWAT, Kill Bill Vol. 2, the drama In My Country, and in another thriller, Twisted, which received catastrophically low ratings and flopped at the box office, but at the same time Samuel L. Jackson participated in the voice acting of the successful animated film The Incredibles. In addition, he voiced several video game characters. At that time, the annual income of the Hollywood star was estimated at $30 to $35 million. In 2005, he appeared in Triple X, State of the Union, Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, The Man, an episode of the TV series Extras, and the biographical sports drama Coach Carter. Shooting the ball. What's your name, sir? Jason Lau, but I ain't no sir. You're not a sir. Well, are you a madam? <laughs> <laughs> the real Ken Carter was present on the set and praised Jackson's performance. After that, the actor played in such films as Freedom Land, Snakes on a Plane, Home of the Brave, Resurrecting the Champ, 1408, Cleaner, Jumper, and also voiced the animated series Afro Samurai. In another project, the drama Black Snake Moan, Samuel became friends with his co-star Christina Ritchie. They remain good friends to this day. In addition to filming, the actor voiced God in in the Bible Experience, an audio version of the New Testament. He also recorded a parody audiobook of bedtime stories. A new milestone in the actor's career was the signing of a contract with the Marvel Studio to participate in the films of their cinematic universe. And a few years before that, Jackson agreed to the fact that the character of Nick Fury in the comic books was copied from him. Samuel first appeared in this role in the post credit scene of the first Iron Man movie. Who the hell are you? Nick Fury, director of S.H.I.E.L.D. Other works of the actor were the animated series Star Wars The Clone Wars and Afro Samurai Resurrection, the thriller Lakeview Terrace, the drama Gospel Hill, the musical comedy Soul Men, and the superhero film The Spirit. In 2009, Samuel's voice was heard in Quentin Tarantino's Inglorious Bastards and the cartoon Astro Boy, and the audience saw his performance in the melodrama Mother and Child. In the early 10s, the movies Unthinkable, The Other Guys, The Sunset Limited, The Samaritan, and Meeting Evil were released. Samuel L. Jackson voiced several animated projects and video games and played Nick Fury in several Marvel films, Iron Man 2, Thor, Captain America, The First Avenger, 
and The Avengers. The studio concluded a unique deal with the actor, under the terms of which he was guaranteed to appear in nine films. Jackson is also irreplaceable for Quentin Tarantino, participating in almost all of the director's films. So, in 2012, the actor got the role of the butler in the revisionist western movie Django Unchained. The creative duo could be seen again while working on 2015's The Hateful Eight. Everybody keep your mouth shut. Do like I say. You open your mouth, you're gonna get a bullet. You move a little sudden, a little strange, you're gonna get a bullet. Not a warning, not a question, a bullet. And between Tarantino's two projects, the actor starred in the thrillers Old Boy, Reasonable Doubt, Kite, the superhero movie Robocop, the action movie Big Game, the spy action comedy Kingsman The Secret Service, the teen film Barely Lethal, and the musical crime comedy Chirac. In addition, he appeared in the Marvel projects Captain America The Winter Soldier, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and Avengers Age of Ultron. At the end of 2015, Samuel presented the action-packed horror film Cell, and in the following years he starred in the movies The Legend of Tarzan, Ms. Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, XXX Return of Xander Cage, Kong Skull Island. The fee in the latter amounted to $5 million. The actor also signed up to shoot in the movie The Hitman's Bodyguard to work with Ryan Reynolds. He again contributed to the creation of the character's appearance. Thanks to Jackson, the assassin got tattoos of crows on his body, one for each person he killed. It's gonna be a while. I can just go in there and get a room. There's an art to low-impact, high-efficiency breaking and entering. But... Art subjective. His next projects were the fantasy comedy drama Unicorn Store, the cartoon Incredibles 2, the drama Life Itself, the superhero film Glass, the action comedy Shaft, the military drama The Last Full Measure, and four more superhero films Avengers Infinity War, Captain Marvel, Avengers Endgame, and Spider-Man Far From Home. Besides, Samuel voiced Mace Windu in the film Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. In 2020, the biographical drama The Banker starring Jackson was released on the Apple TV platform. He also appeared as himself in the comedy series Staged and played in the New Year's Netflix project Death to 2020. In 2021, the films Spiral from the Book of Saw, Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard, The Protégé premiere, and Samuel voiced Nick Fury in the animated series What If. The actor is often criticized for his participation in numerous Marvel projects but he himself believes that it is better to have a good time on the set than to chase awards. Jackson even called for an Oscar to be awarded to the film Spider-Man No Way Home, which became Sony's highest grossing film project in its history. By the way, without even striving for it, Samuel received an Academy Honorary Award for Outstanding Achievements in Cinema. In 2022, the actor voiced the cartoons Paws of Fury, The Legend of Hank, and played the main role in the miniseries The Last Days of Ptolemy Gray. Hello, ladies. <laughs> Y'all going down to Miss D's? Is you a playing granddad? I ain't been to Miss D's in about 90 years. Mm -hmm. I bet she miss you too, huh? <laughs> I don't even know where it's at no more. Well, I bet you can find a few looks. Oh, I bet you I get over there and still cut a rug, though. <laughs> In the adaptation of Walter Mosley's book, Jackson played a 90-year-old man suffering from dementia. He gladly agreed to be cast, becoming one of the first approved actors in the project. For the actor, this was a very personal film since his grandfather and mother suffered from Alzheimer's disease. He himself tries to train his memory by solving crossword puzzles. Samuel also participates in fundraisers to fight this disease. Soon, Samuel L. Jackson will appear in the superhero film Marvels, the thriller The Kill Room, the miniseries Secret Invasion, the action movie Argyle, and the drama Harry and the Butler. A fun fact is that, unlike many of his colleagues, the actor likes to watch movies with his participation. Thanks to this, he improves his skills by analyzing mistakes, and he also collects figurines of the characters he plays. Jackson is famous for the fact that he often swears in his films. According to experts, he is one of the three most swearing actors. In addition, he has a unique writer. Being an avid golfer, he demanded to include in all contracts with film studios a clause allowing him to go to the golf course during filming at least twice a week. Movie bosses are ready for such conditions because the costs pay off. In 2022, Samuel L. Jackson was recognized as the most profitable actor in Hollywood. 
The worldwide box office receipts of his films, with the exception of episodic roles, amounts to almost $17 billion. The actor's net worth is estimated at $250 million. His standard salary for the main role varies from $10 to $20 million, and for every appearance in Marvel films, Samuel earns $4 to $6 million, even if it's just a post-credit scene. Advertising contracts bring him additional income. He starred in an Apple ad where he introduced Siri's voice assistant, voiced their competitor Alexa from Amazon, collaborated with Capital One Bank Holding, Adidas, and Brioni Brands. The actor also advertised the American wireless network company Verizon, whose video was presented during the Super Bowl in 2021. As an outspoken advocate against racism, Samuel couldn't help but support Barack Obama in the presidential race and starred in his campaign ad. In it, the actor, in his unusual obscene manner, called on citizens to wake up and vote Democrat. Jackson calls Obama's election to the presidency a significant step towards overcoming discrimination in the United States. As a child of segregation, he appreciates that the younger generations of African Americans can see that dreams can come true and they can become anything, even the president. Jackson regularly donates money to support education. In 2020, he joined the campaign Your Actions Save Lives, calling for people to wear masks. The actor owned a four-bedroom apartment in New York City overlooking Central Park. It was purchased in 2005 for $4.8 million, and in 2018, it was put up for sale for $13 million. Back in the 80s, Jackson and Latanya Richardson bought a property in Harlem for $35,000 and sold it in 1997 for $125,000. Samuel and his wife used to own a house in San Fernando in northwest Los Angeles County. They chose this quiet place so that their daughter would grow up in a calm environment. The family had a large living room with a fireplace, a rustic kitchen, a dining room, and an outdoor swimming pool in the backyard. The mansion was sold in June 2015 for $2.8 million, and since then it has been completely redone and sold again for more. Jackson's current 1,200 square yard home is located in Beverly Hills on top of a mountain. Samuel and Latanya bought it in 2000 for $8.35 million. In addition to the main house, they have a guest house, a separate garage, as well as a tennis court and a swimming pool. Today, the property is estimated at about $20 to $30 million. The Hollywood actor was spotted driving a Toyota Camry, a Range Rover Sport, and a Snow White Maybach 57S. The media also reported that there is a Jaguar XF and a Rolls-Royce Phantom in his garage. Jackson says he wants to perform every day, so he doesn't limit himself to serious genres and subjects. What do you think of this approach? If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting.